Okay, so in past videos we've talked a little bit about monoprotic acids, but I want to look at equilibrium for diprotic acids. And the same logic that we're going to talk about in this video applies to triprotic acids as well. So remember that monoprotic meaning donating one proton, di, then, and tri, two and three protons uh, respectively. So if I have a generalized acid that looks like this, then I have two protons to give. In the first step, and we can kind of think about the process happening stepwise, there's a donation of a hydrogen to a water that gives you your hydronium, right, our definition of an acid, and then we end up with this anion that's left over. In that second step, that anion also acts like an acid, so it can donate a hydrogen to the water here, and then that gives us our hydronium and the anion that's left over. Now, because we know that we can add stepwise reactions together, then we could talk about an overall reaction. But let's first think about the equilibrium constants for each of these processes. There's going to be some sort of Ka associated with this first one. Remember, the subscript of A refers to the fact that it's an acid. And because it's the first step, let's just call that A sub 1. We know that the equilibrium constant is equal to the concentration of our products over our reactants. So we have our products here over our diprotic acid concentration. And again, we're omitting the water because it's a pure substance. And that's going to have some sort of value associated with that first step. The second step is also going to have an equilibrium constant that's associated with it because it's discussing kind of the acidic behavior of this particular ion, then we would call this a K sub A. Because it's the second step, let's just call it K sub A2. And this is going to have some sort of uh, equilibrium constant value. And the expression is going to be the same as what we've seen before. So it's going to be the concentration of our products over the concentration of our reactants. Now, in the past, we've said when we combine together these into some sort of overall reaction, then we can omit the pieces of it that are in common on the product side of one and the reactant side of the other, because those are functionally called intermediates, right? They're these species that form um, in one process, but are used up in another. So in this case, our intermediate here is our HA, which is formed in step one, but used in step two. And so when I combine together these overall reactions, then I have my initial diprotic acid. I have two waters. I have two hydroniums which makes sense because, again, it's diprotic, so I should end up with two of them, and then the anion that's left over. And when we first started talking about acids and bases, then this is the way that you would predict it would have happened, right? I react my acid with my water, I get as many hydroniums as I have hydrogens to give, and then I'll have whatever's left over when I use up all of those hydrogens. So that's my overall process. This overall process is in equilibrium and also has a Ka value that's associated with it. And the Ka value is a function of the Ka values that have happened for every step along the way. And we said for addition of reactions, then the overall equilibrium constant is equal to the product of the equilibrium constants along the way. <clears throat> So if we think about what that looks like, then we have our hydronium. Here's just plugging in our values here. Times our second equilibrium constant. And when we multiply those together, and we kind of cross multiply and divide things out, then we end up with a Ka for the overall expression that is equal to what we would have predicted in the first place. It's going to be our hydronium concentration raised to the second power, right, which reflects our coefficient here. That's what we would have predicted times our A. And then all over our initial value here of our diprotic acid. 
Okay. All right, so that's just kind of logistically what we're looking at here with equilibrium for diprotic acids. But I think the interesting bit kind of comes about because of the values of each of these. Now, depending on the strength of the acid that we're starting off with, this value is going to have some particular value. And again, we said that the Ka value, the larger it is, the stronger the acid, because it indicates that there's a lot of product being formed. And the more hydronium that we have in our products, then the, the stronger the acid, the greater the acidic nature of it. So for any process where we're donating multiple protons, so talking about diprotic and triprotic, this value is always going to be the greatest value. And then your Ka for the subsequent protons that are being donated are going to always be smaller than this first one. So it's always going to be that the first step is the largest. You're always going to get the most hydronium out of the first step. And we can actually use that information to make some assumptions about our equilibrium concentrations and pH.